Hey Javas, this is a screencast. You don't get to see my face on this one. And I think that's okay because our task for module one, exercise one, is to create a structure for organizing our class files within NetBeans. So let's go ahead from technologyrediscovery.net, jump into module one. You'll see that I already have posted a video for the overall concepts and we're going to jump down to exercise one. Now, Just because there's a screencast here doesn't mean you shouldn't read and follow the steps carefully. I wrote these up quite nicely for you. This is to give you an overview and in case you get stuck you can see click by click as I build our packages. The high level concept here is that NetBeans is capable of managing extremely complicated projects. Many professional projects that run Java include hundreds of class files. Those class files have to be organized in a sensible array or, or everyone would go bonkers. And so learning how to create a project with packages inside of them that are named in logical ways and then classes that live inside those packages allows people to work together on teams by divvying up who works on which packages. It allows us to update and upgrade code in a modular way, meaning I can update only a single package that does a certain function and leave the other ones untouched. Lots of good reasons for modular design. And the little activity I gave you was to imagine that we are a techie adventure company and we are managing both our clients and our destinations in Java. And so this diagram that we see on the left side of my screen is giving you a layout in a um, symbolic form of what we want to create in NetBeans. So without further ado, we need a project called Westward Adventures. So I can jump to File, New Project, and I'm going to select a Java application, and we get our Create Project dialog. As we've known, if you've read the exercise, we are careful about how we capitalize um, uh, how we capitalize the names of various components of Java. So projects should have only lowercase letters to start them, and uh, packages also should have only lowercase letters. Classes are reserved for having capital letters to begin their their um, their names. So I'm going to jump back, and I need to actually delete that Beans Project Westward Adventures. Kill that. Okay, so I'm here. I'm going to make a new project. It's a Java application, and the name of our file is Westward Adventures. Notice the convention for capitalization is critical in Java. The project and packages should never begin with an uppercase letter. The uppercase letters are reserved for the fundamental building block in Java, which is the class. Now, when I'm making this project, I do not want it to make a main class, because what that will do is it will create a class with the name Westward Adventures, which we don't want for this exercise. So I'm going to finish that. You'll notice that NetBeans has created some default uh, structures inside of our project. Let's do a little zoom in here. So you'll notice that it has given us a source package folder or directory and we have a nameless package and in theory we could come here and say I would like to make a new Java class. Now when you do this it says this neat little warning down here it says it is highly recommended that you do not place Java classes in the default package. This is NetBeans watching our backs. NetBeans understands that there are technically feasible things to do like creating a class that doesn't have a package and then there are best practices which is we don't make classes that do not have a package so I need to make the package first so I'm gonna look over here I need a package called client management notice that it is defaulting to source package that's the location within the project and because I'm making a package I don't put it in a package, but we can certainly nest these. So I am making, uh, oh, sorry, excuse me, this is my Java class. So I need to start by going to the higher level uh, component here. So I can go to source package and say new Java package. So here's where we say client 
script management. It's going to live in source packages. So always take a peek to see that what NetBeans is doing is what we want. We can usually undo things, but when we're making projects and packages, undoing is usually a pain. So we want to get it right the first time. You'll notice that our package is grayed out because it has no classes inside of it. So I can come here, according to our diagram, we need a class called Registration, capital R Registration, and a class called Confirmation, with a capital C. So again, I can right-click the container that I want to build something inside of. So I want to build something inside Client Management, so I can say New Java Class, and this class name is Registration. Now notice if I do a lowercase r it will let me do so but that is against the Java convention and if you code with anybody else they will think a that you don't know what you're doing and b it's a pain because they can't tell the difference between your packages and your classes so do yourself and your future colleagues a favor and capitalize the first letter of your classes now I'm not going to run through all four classes but I am going to jump down and show you that once we have made our classes I'm going to suggest that you take some time and practice coding up our essential method in each class to get practice that means that inside our class this is the primary container let's go ahead and comment the closing curly brace so remember if I click on a curly brace Every curly brace has a pair. They exist in pairs. You'll never, ever see a lonely, uncoupled curly brace. If you do, Java will uh, give you an error because it won't know how to read the code. It's like accidentally driving off from the gas station with a door open. It's a big disaster. You can't do it. So we need to uh, keep our curly braces straight. And one way to do that is by labeling with this line comment here where uh, what each closing curly brace is actually closing. So you can see because I'm making a Java class, it opens with a curly brace at the end of our class declaration, and it closes with a closing curly brace. So I can say end or close uh, class registration. All right, now we want to simulate what a program or a class that manages registration might say and we want it to just print something basic out to the console. We can only have actions carried out by the Java virtual machine if those actions occur inside a method. A method is something that a class does. Every method in uh, or every class in Java that you want to run as a program must have a method with this signature. Signature means the set of keywords that define the class. So we can say that anyone, meaning uh, this method is going to be public, which means any other class can interact with this method. Uh, we won't know what the word static means for a while. This is one of those cases where you will be using a keyword in Java that you don't understand for a little while. That doesn't mean you shouldn't look it up and try to read it, but it's related to the object creation process, which we have to understand the fundamentals before that will make sense. So it's public, it's static. Void means this method doesn't give us any information back. Some methods have inputs and outputs. This method only has inputs. And those inputs come inside the parentheses. This it looks a little bit complicated, but it's not. What this is saying is the main method takes a string, which is text, in from whoever runs this program, can pass in information to the program if we need to. Now this is red highlighted because this is a method and methods define a block of text or a block of code. Blocks are open and closed with curly braces. So until I write those curly braces the NetBeans precompiler is reading the code along with me and saying mm -mm, not doing that we can't have a method without open closed curly braces and you'll notice that to keep my code organized I'm going to label the close of this curly brace so I can say close the main method and uh, now I have a runnable program so I can come up here I can do a control s notice that if I change something in the program the title of the class in the tab becomes bold and when I go back and save it with control s 
it goes to non-bold, which means that there are no unsaved changes. The green triangle suggests that the precompiler has not found any problems, so I can come to run and say run file. And we successfully run, ran the file, but our program doesn't do anything, so there's nothing interesting to see. Well, let's have it print something out, because that's all we know how to do. So we can say system.out. Now what this means is we are accessing a method on another object, an object that comes from a class file, and it was programmed by someone else in the Java library. The class is called system. Inside system, there's a, an object called out. And on that object called out, we have a method, something that does something, called print line. Send a line of text to the console. Now, just like every method, print line requires, or uh, re does, it does require inputs. In this case, print line will only print text. We call text strings. So I can uh, make a note that I am inside class registration, and uh, we can get practice typing this. Now remember, sending uh, information to a method is an action, and it's accomplished with a statement. Statements end with semicolons. Again, we have our precompiler reading along with us, and if we don't terminate a statement with a semicolon, it will say that is an invalid uh, set of keywords to type in. So we can print out, I'm inside class registration. We can also print out something that suggests that this is a registration program. So we can say, please enter the name of a new client and then I can terminate with a semicolon. Now you'll notice if we mistype something, NetBeans will be handy and friendly. Don't get scared of the red. It will say, all right, I don't know what that is because it's not spelled right. So I can come back and correct it. And again, I have unsaved changes, so I'm going to do a control S. And now I can say run, run file. And we can see that the only thing this program does is it executes uh, it starts by finding the main method, it begins at the first line of the main method, it reads it, and it does what it says. This line says, hey, go to the console and print out whatever's in the parentheses, in which case that is this statement, I am inside class registration. Once that line's done, it goes to the second line and does the same thing. And so our output has shown that is successful. So the remainder of this exercise is asking you to do this three more times and I have given you a key for what my package looks like or my project looks like and you can see the uh, sample code that I just wrote down here under instructor instructors code for confirmation class so there you have it there is exercise one